Okay, so when we talk about illusion of depth um, with things like rocks and trees and water, you want to make sure that there's less detail in the distant things. They're smaller, they're higher up on the page typically. Uh, there's more detail in the foreground, more contrast, um, more color saturation. So I'm going to focus on a small patch of rocks in the foreground. I would recommend that in your landscape you try to apply the tech techniques that I'm showing you to as much as you possibly can at the same time to bring up the whole, develop the whole landscape at once. Just for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to do a small patch. So you can see that I'm just blocking in the rocks um, with some gray right now. I just want to add some color there. A middle tone gray is where I'm going to start. And so I do kind of blend in some of the separations that I had put there. Then I'm going to take a um, lighter tone um, and just develop the form by looking where the sun is reflecting off of the rocks the most where they are the lightest in color and applying it over top of that middle tone and so the nice thing about pastels the reason they are like a painting medium is that they will blend with the color that is already there to mix a new color just like wet on wet paint would this is very much uh, the feeling that you would get if you were an impressionist uh, standing in front of a landscape working with oil paints like on location making a painting like in one hour. Okay then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pull out the darkest shadows again with the dark blue which is what I sketched the rocks in with initially. Uh, and so with that I will start to add some like you know, I'm developing the form more, but I'm also going to add some little like lines, hatching, kind of scumbling texture. So um, this is the stage after putting the middle tones in, then the highlights, then going back to the shadows and then adding any like edgy, rugged texture uh, with just the very like corner of the pastel uh, to get that in there and that detail, especially in the foreground area. The middle ground, um, this will dissipate these details and the background, um, they probably won't even really have any details. Now I'm just going in with a brown to kind of tone down that blue so it doesn't feel so blue. And then I'm going in with some white. Um, so I'm skipping back between those dark and the lightest values again. The white is doing textured marks um, and brightest highlights in the rocks. That's what I'm applying the white for. So for review, sketch out your rocks with a dark value, focusing on the separations between the individual rocks if there's piles of them. Then go in with a middle value to block in um, the rocks entirely so that there's a little bit of pastel over the entire thing. Add a light value over top to develop the form where the light is reflecting off of the rock and then go in with your darker values to build up the shadows, further develop the form, add texture. And then I would go in with some white or the lightest you know, color that you have to really pop out any um, rugged textures that stick out. That would be the method that I would use to apply to rocks. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about the texture in this beach scene that I did a while ago. Um, so the distant water is going to be very more, much more blended and show a lot less um, contrast in the texture. And so longer strokes for water that's, you know, large bodies of water that's far away, uh, you want to make sure that they're kind of blended, long strokes, um, you know, soft contrast. As you work towards the middle and the foreground, you're going to end up having um, more texture, more punctuate, punctuated texture. And you can use um, some scumbling and some broken color in those areas to kind of build up the texture. So, um, I'm using a white for where like the white water kind of crashes against um, the sand. And then I'm going to add some smaller broken line, kind of broken textures, broken color textures um, in the middle and the foreground. So in the middle ground, the lines are going to be much shorter dashes closer together. In the foreground, um, they'll be like more contrasting and um, further apart. Okay, so I wanted to show you a quick way to lay out water texture when you have like current. And so what I start with is kind of the middle value of the color of the water, whether it's um, brown or green or blue. Then I go over top of it with a darker value for like the dark parts of the current, but like the larger chunks of dark parts of the current. So I'm going with a dark brown here. The strokes are going to get thinner and shorter as they get further away in the distance. Uh, at the bottom of the page where the water is closer, they're thicker and longer. Then I go in with an even darker color and I do just kind of some thin lines in between uh, that 
first stage of shadow that I did. Uh, and that gets like smaller as it gets further away, but it stays a thin line. Okay, then I blend that in and kind of blend over top of the shadow areas with um, a lighter color. So this might be a white or it might be a light blue. It might be a light green, depending on what you have available in your set and what makes sense for your water. Um, but I kind of just like crisscross and um, kind of weave over the colors that I've put down. Um, I'm going to blend the color into the tooth of the paper uh, where you can see like a lot of the paper through. I'm going to take the white and just kind of move it around. This is actually I think a light blue. As it gets further away I do make my white kind of like blend even more in like um, closer together lines. And then I'll go in and just kind of redefine any areas that I need to with um, the darker or the lighter colors and just kind of add like some highlight edges um, to the current as I need to uh, to kind of just, you know, uh, accent and define um, the textures. But this is a really quick way to do like a whole body of water um, that has a lot of current to it, uh, which sometimes can be really confusing and hard to break down. But if you just look for the values and the colors that you can use for those values and use this broken color technique and blend a little bit with a lighter tone at the end, you'll really get a nice result.